We are here inside of After Effects, and I would like to show you how to turn on motion blur for your moving objects. So we have a very simple composition. I'm just tapping my spacebar to play through here. So these two objects, we have ball one on the top just here, ball two on the bottom. They are just whipping from left to right in only 10 frames. That's why when I move between frames, you can see there's a lot of movement there. And it's a very staccato look because these are just hard edges just here. Let's try and soften this up by adding a bit of motion blur. I'll have shown you how to do that within only the uh, next minute or so. That's probably enough for most of you. For those of you wanting to take a deeper dive into the settings for motion blur, I'll explain that in the second part of this video. So you don't even need to select a layer, guys. I'm wanting to turn on motion blur for ball two. So notice, nothing selected. We're looking for this little column just here. The three little circles at the top just here represent the icon for motion blur. And if you don't see that, down in the bottom left corner of After Effects, there's a series of little buttons just here. Those buttons will turn on and off different features within the layers and timeline section. So again, if you're not seeing this little guy, come down to the bottom left and start turning on buttons. Okay, so we are looking for ball two. We are looking for this column just here. So if I turn this on, hey, fantastic. There we go, motion blur is now turned on for ball two. So if I play through that, that's the result just there. Now that looks pretty good, but I'm thinking we could make this look even a little bit better again. I should point out guys, there is a master switch for motion blur. Now this was changed relatively recently by Adobe. The act of turning on motion blur for a layer will now turn on this master switch by default. That wasn't always the case, guys. If you're turning on motion blur for a layer, but you're not seeing the change just here, make sure the master switch for motion blur is also turned on. Just to show you what's going on there, guys, if I was to turn on, say, motion blur for both ball one and ball two, we can see that just now because the master switch is on. If I turn the master switch off, it's turning off motion blur at a composition level. So these switches just here turn on motion blur at a per object or a per layer level. The master switch here makes sure that it's turned on at a composition level. Okay, so let's return to my scenario that I had a moment ago. Ball one, no motion blur. Ball two has motion blur. And uh, let's take that deeper dive into those motion blur settings just now, guys. So let's scoot my composition over just a little bit. So composition, composition settings. And let's jump from the basic tab into the advanced tab. And you can see just down here, there is a section for motion blur. All right, guys, we're about to start making some changes to these settings just here. If you don't see that reflected out here, make sure your preview checkbox is turned on just down here. Okay, uh, guys, we are about to make changes, like I said. Keep in mind, these settings are sticky, okay? What that means is if you start to create later compositions or even projects, after Effects will remember the settings that you've dialed in just here. So feel free to change these settings, but also remember you might need to change them back at a later stage. Okay, so what are these settings exactly? Well, I'm just gonna give a superficial explanation. There is a little bit more detail just down there. What these numbers are trying to do is represent real world mechanics on real world cameras. So the shutter angle, for example, is set to 180 degrees. In the real world, it actually has a physical upper limit of 360, but because we're in the digital world just here, we can push that even further. So what's shutter angle? Well, let's crank this up and see what happens. You can see as I start to increase this, the amount of blur on ball two just down here is increasing. So I can drag this all the way up to 720 degrees. So think of shutter angle just as basically the amount of blur. Okay, so what's shutter phase? Well. Again, its default is negative 90, but I might start dragging this to the left and let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that the actual blur remains the same, but it's actually moving relative to the position of the object. So that's all that's doing. And the way you typically set these guys, take your shutter angle, divide it by two, and take the negative of that. So remember the shutter angle and shutter phase by default were 180 and negative 90. So in this scenario, with a shutter angle of 720, a shutter phase of negative 360 would be an appropriate choice. 
again, guys, you can dial in whatever you like. So you can see, for example, here, I might decide that I would rather have the blur running out the front of the object, but I kind of liked what it was doing there with the negative 360, so I'll dial that back in. Okay, so I'm liking the amount of blur. I'm liking where the blur sits relative to the object. So what's his samples per frame? Well, you can see that there is a little bit of banding here within this blur. So it looks good, but we can see some lines within here. So the default value for samples per frame is 16. Let's uh, say push this up to 30 and see what that looks like. I'll just press my tab key to jump out of there. And already that's looking much, much better. The blur is much softer. I could even try pushing that to 50. In that case, it didn't make that big a change, so I might drop that back to 30. Also guys, of course, the settings which you change in here may be more taxing on your system. So please, if the fans on your computer or laptop explode, please don't blame me, okay? So use these with a little bit of caution. You've been warned, okay? So samples per frame, I'm kind of liking where 30's at. Adaptive sample limit, don't really need to change that. You can have a little bit of a read if you want some more information on that just down there, guys. So let's choose OK, and let's play through this just now. That is looking great. And of course, guys, if you need to change these settings, you can easily go back into composition, composition settings and change those at will. So that's it there, guys. Motion blur inside of After Effects. I hope that helps. Catch you later.